I uh, wanted to do The Little Mermaid because we are trying to introduce ballet to new audiences, family audiences, um, so that a family could come and, and everybody in the family could enjoy the, the evening or the afternoon, and from a small child to an adult. And so when we uh, did the adaptation, Michael Moritz and myself, we had that very much in mind, the, the length of it. It's, a, it's a short, 70 minutes. Uh, for a whole experience, and also it um, has pathos and it has humor and uh, you know fantastic costumes and um, it's just really a, I think a very entertaining experience for the audience and it it has you know it's moving but it it, it has a happy ending. <laughs> My version is happy. I I felt like I felt the characters in the story are the same characters that we have in our world. You know, there there are people that are young and breathless, and they'll do anything to, you know, find love, and then you know there's a consequence for that. And the the amazing thing about the Little Mermaid story is that she, you know, she goes against all you know societal belief, and she tries to be something she can't be. But the happy thing is that um, the the prince then accepts who she is. So we, it, it's a bit of a parable in terms of tolerance and um, accepting people that aren't like you. I, I'm very drawn to stories that um, that where you can watch people work things out, and I think storytelling in through dance is um, just something that I've always loved and and that I love doing. Because um, I, you know, I didn't come strictly from a classical ballet background. I came from a theater background. So slowly along the way, the two, you know, dance and theater blended for me. And I think it, it can actually affect people, and that's what's exciting about it. Well, I think what's uh, maybe interesting is the choreography is character driven. So the sea witch for instance, moves in a very different way than the mermaid. And, you know, it's not that we're trying to simulate swimming, but using the vocabulary of dance, you know, each character kind of has a special language, each of the central characters. You know, the Sea King has a very gallant, more classical ballet kind of carriage, and the, the younger guys, you know, they, they, they're more contemporary, the way they dance, and the fish, all the fish, and I have, you know, little starfish and little seahorses and uh, we have some soft shoe crabs <laughs> that um, you know that do a soft shoe and so it's you know it's a lot of fun in that regard I mean I just had a whimsical time trying to identify fish through choreography. Michael Moritz wrote the score. It's an original score. It's a very complicated score. I mean, he's just done the most extraordinary job. And he writes, uh, we, we kind of set out to write a film score. In other words, it's very expressive of what's happening. It's not just sort of a happy part or a sad part, but we would talk about at what was going on so that it would be almost like post-scoring a movie, the way that John Williams does, for instance. And we felt that would be, um, an interesting experience at a different kind of experience for the audience and also we have narration we have a wonderful narrator um, on tape um, just like a movie score sometimes has and we have songs uh, sung by some wonderful Broadway performers it, it's sort of like all fairy tales are profound on a certain level but also are very entertaining on another level so you know, I think people, anybody can come to this without having to understand anything. You know, they can just receive it like you do when you go see a movie. You know, just, you don't expect to be an expert. If, you know, in the Wild West, if you're going to see a Western, you just accept what is coming at you and translate it. And that's what people can do. Just come and enjoy it.